This video will get me into trouble because I'm going to be extremely raw. I'm sure I'm going to get abusive at some point in this video. And the reason it's going to get me into trouble is because I know people's parents watch me at this stage. Lots of older people watch me at this stage. Lots of powerful people watch me at this stage. But I also feel that the podcast is only getting recognized 500 podcasts in. I've been doing this for a very long time without the kind of recognition that we've been getting now. And it's taken eight years of YouTube and business before this to actually reach this stage. I believe that the reason God allowed me to get to this point was because of my inherent aggression. And you're going to get to see that aggressive, extremely masculine side of me in this podcast. So here we go. Being masculine doesn't mean you have to be masculine in a toxic way. It means that you're supposed to embrace your inner masculine animal that will get you to where your potential wants you to fucking be in life. So these are my seven male lessons that I wish I was taught earlier. And if you're a female listener, I know you'll gain value from this, but this particular podcast is directed towards the men. Because while women go through their own set of challenges during their feminine course of life, men go through some challenges as well. I'm going to be addressing the boys in this one. Challenge number one. Something I learned in my childhood, accepting failure. Ever since you realize you're a boy, you know that you're not supposed to cry in public. You know that eventually when you grow up in life, your worth is going to be decided by your success. And if you don't find success, if you're not helpful in this world, you will have lesser worth in the world. When you begin your professional career, you are treated based on what you've achieved in life. And that's extremely fucking difficult for every guy, especially when they're just beginning their career. The reason it was slightly easier for me is because I had a tough childhood. I won't get into the details about it because I do believe certain aspects of your life need to be private. But I'll give you a small story that was an extremely character building phase of my life. When I was 11, I was training as a judoka for the prior two years. I became extremely good in my school competitions. I would win everything easily. I was a strong kid. I was good at judo. And when I went for my first inter-school competition, I finished 7th out of 7 kids. And the inner male ego inside me felt insulted. I felt like I wasn't good and I did not process it. And I knew I wasn't supposed to cry in public, but I cried because I was so angry and I didn't know what to do about it because judo is like wrestling. And if you lose, that means you physically not dominated another male. You're physically not at the same level of technique or discipline as those other guys from other schools. I was just the champion of my own school. But when you put me out in the real world, I lost so badly. I didn't know how to process that anger. I just kept crying. And my judo coach, Kavas Bilamoria, my sensei, as well as my main sensei in life, my mother, gave me my most simple lesson in life. They didn't mollycoddle me and tell me, oh, yeah, no problem. Why are you crying? It's okay, you'll win the next time. They both gave me tough treatment by saying, listen, if you've lost, your result is not in your hands, but your preparation is and you just didn't prepare well enough for this contest. And I kept crying because I was still angry, but eventually the anger withered away. And I accepted that lesson from my martial arts life. I just hadn't tried hard enough. I worked extremely hard over the next year. And from age 12 to 15, I won the gold medal in that competition every single year after that most important character building phase of my life. So when my career started at 22 and everyone's doubting this whole YouTube journey, what are you doing with your life? Why did you do engineering? To make money, I actually became a fitness trainer. So for an engineer to get into fitness training, lots of people in society would look down upon it. It didn't matter because I knew that this was a recap of age 11 to 12, where I just had to get better in order to win all those gold medals in my professional life. The most important masculine lesson you learn early on in life is that failure will help you grow beyond what you know. When engineering started in my 12th standard, I was the top student. Once first year started, I was dealing with a lot of personal life stuff. I had a bad breakup, got deeply into alcohol, got around the wrong kind of people. And when my exams were coming up, I was so disenchanted with engineering, the way it was taught in engineering college in India that I just targeted passing my engineering exam. So I studied only in order to get 50%. Passing was 35%. 
I finished at 30% and I failed one of the papers. I finished with the lowest marks in my entire class from being the topper in my 12th grade the highest marks in that particular class I went to the bottom of the class. Jibes from kids, jibes from professors, pity from friends, jibes from your best friends. All that felt terrible. I felt so bad because I'd let down the inner martial artist. I realized that fuck I failed. I'd never failed in my academics. All I knew was my lessons from my martial arts. I went and got this tattoo tattooed. Um lots of people at this stage eight years into beer biceps I think after we made so many motivational videos they get the same tattoo tattooed on their arms. I want to talk about it once again. This tattoo is to remind me to not be a fucking moron again. <laughs> when you have the potential to be a 100% on anything you do no matter what it is if you're a part of something you target that 100% you never target 50% it's a motivational tattoo for me but moreover it's to remind me about the worst mentality that i ever held in my life that i could only rise up from there because that's literally the worst mental state i could fucking get to in my own human journey that i aimed for less than 100% very important character building moment for the rest of my life lesson number 2 this one's a slightly more emotional lesson um most people know how to go about their careers thanks to the countless many pointless youtube videos made about career motivation everyone knows the cliches everyone knows the career hacks but people don't know the emotional hacks one of the most important emotional hacks you learn is how to deal with rejection from women often especially with motivated men who want to court women who want to date women they won't give up on a girl and in some cases maybe not giving up on a girl actually gets that girl to date you but in many cases especially in our country when a girl has rejected you you need to learn to accept the rejection After engineering college when my career started picking up a little bit it was a very difficult first year of beer biceps and then I started getting recognized a little bit I crossed you know 20,000 30,000 subs it was going somewhere I got a lot of confidence and the only thing that had gotten me to that point and that time 20,000 30,000 subs was a huge number the only thing that got me to that point was brute force just going at it not caring about how tired I am not caring about anything just having that goal in my head I thought that the same rules apply when it comes to the world of dating. I ended up not even dating a girl, just kind of seeing someone, not even seeing someone, maybe even lesser than that. But I got into her because just started crushing on her. I was a hardcore non-vegetarian at that point. She was a Jain girl. Uh, I went out on a date with her once, and I was all about my protein intake at that point. I'm pure vegetarian now. that time i thought okay you know that's a kebab shop i'm going to go there and buy some chicken kebabs for myself i started eating it i was relishing that kali miri chicken kebab now i was enjoying those kebabs and she was sitting next to me and i could kind of sense that she's getting uncomfortable and then she goes i'm sorry i can't sit here the smell is too strong for me now i have a lot of jain friends and i understand the jain perspective on non veg it's very controversial for them non veg is a huge taboo in the jain world where the smell can be nauseating for a lot of jains and i understand that now didn't understand that then i thought that's a little weird then and i'll come to why this is an important story a little later on in the narrative i met her for a few dates we really tried to work things out i i really opened myself up to her she was giving me chances you know she wanted to get to know me and then finally one day she just told me that i don't think things are going to work out and my first reaction was no that's what you think i think i'll make things work out because i thought that when you have genuine effort and genuine hard work behind anything it works out even in the world of dating and i really tried pursuing her i didn't let her go emotionally or through my calls i kept calling her kept pursuing her and eventually a common friend who's a dear friend of mine even today he comes and tells me you're being an idiot learn to take rejection like a man you're being obsessive 
and my first reaction was that i felt anger towards my friend and i know he's like a brother to me at that stage of my life already a bond has just grown deeper since that phase but at that point i got pissed off with him i was like what do you mean what do you mean i'm obsessive i love her i put genuine intent i put genuine effort into this and then gradually i realized what he's saying was right because the things that actually get you that pissed off are things you partially believe in yourself maybe some of those a voice in my head saying that ah uh, you're not going to appeal to everyone what is romantic rejection anyway no matter how good looking how intelligent how rich how powerful how perfect you might be maybe you're just not meant for someone people will accept you or reject you romantically based on their preferences at that moment in time but also based on all the circumstances that their 22 or 25 or 30 or 35 years of life have given them before you women's preferences and priorities also change with age maybe someone who's rejected you now may not reject you 10 years down the line maybe someone who's accepted you now won't accept you 10 years down the line because in romance circumstances play a huge role which is why if someone rejects you you don't have to feel shit about yourself you have to just understand that at that point in that person's reality you're not what they want and that's a very subjective choice of theirs and you have to respect it take a step back you don't need to pursue everyone there's a lot of fish in the sea but more importantly especially when you're a young man save your energy for more productive things if the flower blooms correct the bees come buzzing baby and i wish someone had told me that earlier at that stage i'm just able to articulate it now but i had to learn all these lessons myself be that blooming flower the bees will come themselves i also want to mention that even at this stage when people look at a youtuber's life they think that oh success fame money power chocolate boy looks they think that youtubers and famous people cricketers actors are all desirable right all these domains have lots of men who constantly get rejected and it's a part of being a man getting rejected by women should be taught to younger boys early on in life accept it it's fine sometimes maybe even rithik roshan gets friend zoned you never know lesson number 3 this one's very simple and short and i learned this very late in life and i hope that guys in the early 20s watching this particular video learn this as soon as possible when you ask women certain questions related to emotional matters they'll always give you better advice that's where this whole cliche about how women mature much faster than guys that's where it comes from okay think about this situation you are in a car with a bro of yours and then you also got two girls in that car okay it could be any one your girlfriend your sisters your sister and your mom and then a bro you and that bro won't talk that much but those two women no matter who they are will talk a lot girls exchange a lot of information i think there's actually a stat that claims i don't know how true this is but i'm pretty sure it's true girls speak a lot more words than guys in a particular day i'll try attaching a graphic here which proves that this is a an actual study but we all know that girls exchange a lot of information much more than guys girls are more expressive what do you think that girls talk about when they're alone of course they're also into bakchodi in the same way that guys are into bakchodi they also shit talk but girls break down matters a lot girls analyze a lot girls talk to each other a lot especially when it comes to emotional matters girls discuss their relationships a lot more than we do that's how they grow up faster they're learning faster by being communicative when i started playing football in life i realized how big communication is a part of football your center back is constantly telling your midfielders run there do this do that and you become better at football because of the communication it works the same way when it comes to emotional growth This podcasting journey for me after 500 or so podcasts has been so enriching from a knowledge perspective from an emotional growth perspective because I've just exchanged ideas and kept my ears open that much there's a lot you can learn from women and I learned this very late in my podcasting journey when I realized that wow the insights I get from my female guests are sometimes so much more nuanced and empathetic and nurturing as compared to so many of the male guests we've got 
and when you actually ask a lot of older women this a lot of them will say that there's very few men who are connected to the feminine sides in the 20s and 30s and then in the 40s men begin to connect with the feminine sides more what does that mean i'm not going to break that down in this particular podcast but it basically means being comfortable in your masculinity where you're okay to be vulnerable where you're okay to cry in front of them where you're okay to discuss emotional matters to break down love and relationships because eventually once you make money in life once you gain the success that you always dreamt of you realize that love is the answer and when you're with your girl when you're cuddling on a sunday afternoon and you're not thinking of work that's a much more beautiful moment than any of the god just fucking moments you're going to get in your career you're not going to remember all those career moments but you're going to remember those moments with your girl girls realize this very early on in life they know that love is the answer inherently it's in the genetics in this age of gender fluidity and i don't have any strong opinion on the he him she her thing each to their own i believe in fluidity but i do believe that at least when it comes to millennial men and women we're very different and there's a lot that millennial men can gain from asking the right questions to millennial women the lesson here is have more platonic friendships with women break down concepts with them try having deeper conversation with women it'll help you a lot with your eq it'll help you a lot with your career because your eq is increased because of these conversations next lesson now there's a lot of dudes watching this who still not wrapping their head around the last two points about being rejected by women and then learning from women i don't know why but that's what i anticipate because i am a dude so i have the same testosterone oriented perspectives and that's okay i'm going to give you a testosterone oriented perspective right now joe rogan has this very famous quote which even i have used on the podcast a lot listen to this very carefully soft men create hard times hard times create hard men hard men create soft times and then the cycle repeats when you study history that's what you realize that's why dynasties fade away that's why big businesses eventually shut down that's why people have negative opinions when it comes to nepotism also we talk so much about nepotism in sports and acting but this is the human aspect of it when you grow up really rich and really privileged some things are taken away from you when you grow up on the street when you grow up within difficulty and i've been blessed enough to talk to a lot of people on the show who've had extremely difficult childhoods and i've got to know their past they become extremely different humans in the 20s and 30s they have an edge and if they're sharp enough they'll pick up all the stuff from the soft world as well which is why nawazuddin siddiqui pankaj tripathi manoj bajpai are better actors than many of the male star kids and they were probably better actors when they were the male star kids as age but there's a way for a star kid a product of nepotism or a soft man to actually become a bit of a hard man case in point ranbir kapoor how is he a product of nepotism but still really good at his craft do you know that he's educated at lee strasberg which is the premier acting school in the world went stayed in america yes he had access to that kind of education but he put himself through the grind one of the most difficult art oriented grinds in the world is that course that's why that's at least a part of the reason he's a fantastic actor he's probably the most gifted actor in the indian film industry today i call this concept the warrior in the desert situation every guy whether you're born into richness or poverty you have an inherent warrior because you have those balls shooting up that testosterone in your body testosterone is meant for you to be that caveman side of yourself it goes up in your body and then if you've grown up in privilege your conditioned brain tells you no no maybe i don't want that difficulty maybe i don't want to get into that discomfort zone i want to stay in my comfort zone but growth happens outside of your comfort zone motherfucker and that's why you have to create those deserts around you you have to put yourself in situations that will create career pain emotional pain mental pain spiritual pain for yourself spiritual pain is sitting for hours of meditation can you do that bitch 
I don't think you can. Career pain is working at a place where you've got the job through your own efforts and not through your parents recommending your name for that job. Emotional pain is what we spoke about getting rejected and accepting that rejection. I did this unknowingly for myself at 22 when I told my parents after engineering college that I wanted to get into YouTube. I actually told them I wanted to get into startups at that point because that was my honest goal. My parents did the best thing that they've ever done for me in their own parenting journey. They said cool. For one month post engineering college, everything will be normal. You'll be allowed to be at home. After that, we're not going to pay for anything. But what we will do is we'll provide a roof over your head. We're not going to pay for your food. We're not going to pay for anything to help kickstart your career. You're on your own. I'd done a fitness course in college so I was a certified trainer. I went to Carter Road and literally got my first few clients by going up to slightly unfit kids and doing a sales game and just showing off my knowledge about fitness and then signing them up as clients, made money for myself, saved money by traveling in second class instead of first class. Sometimes I traveled in third class. Once YouTubing started eventually in life, circumstantially i was still active as a trainer i was making a lot of money by that point as a trainer but very importantly i would have moments where i would have almost reached the clients i was in i still live in dadar at that point the clients were in andheri two different parts of town i'd almost reach andheri and my clients would call me saying oh i don't feel like training today can you go back no they are paying me a bomb i'm a top quality trainer i could have gotten pissed off and shown them what's actually happening in my heart or just been a professional and said no problem we'll do it tomorrow and that no problem we'll do it tomorrow happened a lot but i've already reached andheri what do i do i don't want to waste my time because time was important back then it's still important today so i'd reach andheri take a rickshaw to juhu beach run on juhu beach and i'd find runners and say hey you know what I run a YouTube channel where i teach people about diets and fitness can i take your phone and just make you subscribe on those days i'd get 50 subscribers instead of the regular 7 or 8 subscribers per day that i was growing at you make shit count by creating deserts around yourself you have an inherent warrior but most dudes don't create deserts around themselves when they're younger that's a very important part of life because if you've gone through it once you can embrace that mode of living repeatedly at 24 established beer biceps well was getting approached for brand deals but decided let me challenge myself built monk entertainment monk entertainment grew at 27 i tried challenge myself again built level supermind you have to constantly create deserts around yourself to fuel the warrior's journey that's how a warrior becomes an emperor next point bitch this one is close to my heart and i'm not going to expand too much on it when you truly get into the theory of what martial arts are martial arts are not just about the cool moves that you see in films or in the ufc martial arts also have an extremely spiritual side it's all about respect for your guru your sensei it's also about training your mind to think and be a certain way when you're practicing martial arts and it's about how you live your life most important life lesson for the rest of my life from that judo journey the true samurai the true warriors who want to become emperors become emperors much faster when they embrace a bit of a spiritual journey and i'll tell you why one of the best diet oriented decisions i've made for myself was taking up long term intermittent fasting where you starve your stomach for 12 hours ideally for 16 hours and only eat in that 12 hour or ideally 8 hour window you'll see your body being very weak at the start of your intermittent fasting journey and eventually you get very used to it you see your body composition changing you see that this is one of the best things you've done for your own fitness you see that even if you eat some shit in those 8 hours you can get away with it because the process of fasting the process of just resting your stomach does a lot for your hormonal system and your body's healing mechanisms but what about your mind that's what happens in meditation meditation is intermittent fasting of the mind and it's definitely not a cool activity to just sit down 
for 20 minutes it's not fun i've been meditating for years now and there are days where i don't really look forward to my meditation because i've got shit to do but i do it i try being as regular as is possible because i know that that one hour of meditation in the morning is going to make me face all my demons that i'm carrying into that day the overthinking about the breakup the pain from a career failure something else is going on the tension of the coming day all these shoots that travel phase that's coming up i face all of it i feel bad and then eventually i feel okay because your mind just processes it i'm much more still and when i'm more still my weapons work better warrior in the desert turn him into a spiritual samurai are you ready to meditate if you truly want that career growth i think it's important to meditate that's what led me to creating level i'm not trying to market level here but i am kind of marketing it the intention of creating level was all this meditation that helped me over the years i've made it really simple for you guys recorded meditations myself go use it try it see if it impacts you but this video is not about level this video is about the lessons of manlyhood which is why the last two lessons lesson number 6 the pain you feel in your childhood in school in college when you fail when a girl rejects you in your early career when you're insulted in your mid career when people doubt you the pain's never going to go you let go of those situations but that energy of pain in your own human life is going to keep coming back in different forms maybe the girl you've dated for the longest time eventually cheats on you maybe the girl of your dreams who you get married to eventually wants a divorce because you've grown into something that you used to not be the only thing that you're in control of as a man is your own journey testosterone warrior in the desert spiritual samurai sometimes you can't control the circumstances that other people go through maybe the girl of your dreams meets with an accident where she loses all her limbs but she survives what's your decision as a man are you going to stay with her even if she tells you that listen you can divorce me if you want because i understand or maybe her personality needs you and she definitely will need you after losing all her limbs what are you going to do then life is unpredictable The earlier you learn that pain is a part of life and the earlier you learn to process pain as a man the easier life will be that's the core of every single spiritual school that I have ever interacted with that's the core of the bhagavad gita that life is full of suffering all you can do is prepare your mind and heart to deal with the suffering better how everyone's got their own means biologically exercise spiritually meditation mentally therapy journaling writing etc etc but on an everyday basis it's about the friends you select to have around you try keeping the negative presences away try keeping the samurai is near you try keeping growth oriented people near you because when i asked gor gopal das ji about the same question about suffering and pain he said that the greatest cure for long term suffering is to have a sense of purpose a very strong sense of purpose as a human because even if you go through shit and you will go through a lot of shit in life eventually your purpose brings you back into focus what is a horrible breakup what is a horrible life situation what is the death of a loved one when you lose your parents my brother your world is going to get shaken up it's going to be a knockout punch you're going to feel physical pain without anyone inflicting physical pain on you your vision's going to be blurred your thoughts are going to be blurred your heart's feelings are going to be blurred you're not going to understand what you're feeling is going to be worse than anything you faced in your life know that it's coming and prepare yourself because the two most important days in a man's life are the day that the man is born and the day that the man finds out why he was born find out why you were born all those old narratives about finding your passion turning it into a profession self growth etc etc but i'm trying to highlight pain here it's important for an older guy to tell a younger guy that life is not easy i'm going to talk as beer biceps i thought that everything that i have now this house fame 
being given importance as a content creator and there've been phases in my content creation journey where I've not been invited for YouTube fan fests and shitty silly things like that you know all that shit used to get to me that used to be my definition of pain back then all that's happening now I'm being given importance in the world things are going well podcasts are getting views I'm going to talk to cricketers for a living like it's a beautiful life I'm not completely happy man my personal life is not in the best place circumstantially things have not worked out in my relationships I'm trying to mend my relationship with my father I'm trying to make my parents as old age as peaceful as I possibly can and I'm watching my own parents age that's a whole other kind of pain wait till that one starts for you bro but you'll be able to deal with it because eventually in life as a man even if you're not an alpha at work you'll have to be an alpha at home at some point either for your parents and that aspect of your family life or the family you start on your own with a girl when you have kids you're going to be the alpha of that group get stronger early on in life but that doesn't mean you bury the tears and the pain you learn to process it cry feels nice there's a hormonal switch that happens everyone has their own method of crying it's different lots of people use alcohol to cry try not to do that try not to use intoxicants in order to cry maybe write maybe journal go for therapy for me meditation works because i get to see all my thoughts it hurts me so much tears come out i submit my problems to god and then i feel better and then knockout punch that i felt from the pain that's shaken up my vision my heart my soul i settle down i feel like a ufc fighter who's just woken up after taking a knockout punch and then i'm ready to punch again but you need to learn it early in life because shit's going to go down another simple lesson palgar and poche my monk mentor has taught me to love for me a girl love a girl but with a sense of detachment can't be fully attached to that person can't be emotionally dependent on her maybe until she's your wife maybe even after that you got to love with a sense of detachment cuz death is coming bro either yours or theirs The greatest spiritual lesson is the lesson of detachment and the greatest material lesson when it comes to material growth and that's why a lot of you are watching this video the greatest material lesson is be the right amount of evil don't be unethical don't hurt other human beings don't lie be an honorable man but don't be as honorable as ned stark and i say this with a lot of respect but yudhishthir the whole mahabharat has a narrative about how his honor led to the downfall he was still the king eventually everything was fine but learn from indian epics learn from worldwide epics men who only embrace honor get eaten up by the other men who embrace aspects of evil when i was beginning in media Lots of people warned me about how this is a shark pool and they were true. Trust me, the kind of deceit, deception, lies, betrayal, robbery, heartbreak, rejection, failure I've seen in my own media career as a monkey co-founder, as beer biceps, as levels co-founder. You cannot imagine what I have gone through. My business career has been a hundred times harder than my content career. and often the difficulties have happened because of trusted people blindly i've been a ned stark i've been an honorable man and expected that if i give honor to someone during a business transaction during a professional relationship they will respond with honor but that's not how the rest of the world works the rest of the world often works from a place of fear not everyone is brave enough to be honorable everyone trying to protect themselves and people will double cross you in harry potter there are these four houses each house represents different personality traits harry potter's house is gryffindor where if you ask a young kid which house he wants to be a part of at hogwarts every kid will say i want to be a part of gryffindor and the villain house is slytherin i've totally grown into becoming a slytherin in life now slytherin The Slytherin path is slippery because you can easily become evil. You can become arrogant. You can become one of those people that deceives other people. Or you understand how evil works and you live life like a top cop, a top police officer. 
in order to catch the thief first you've got to learn and think and strategize like the thief that's how you catch the thief this is how you survive in the real world this is how you grow in any possible business this is how you make big money in your life go for your finance courses and finance seminars and learn how to handle your money well all that's great but if you learn how to be a bit of a slytherin you'll be able to make more money you'll be able to grow materially and once you've materially grown enough you learn that life is about love and life is about spiritual growth so when it comes to the material world there's a lot of assholes around you and in that world full of assholes you've got to be the most dangerous asshole gradually become more dangerous by surrounding yourself with other ethical but dangerous assholes i hope that this dangerous asshole taught you something today because this is exactly what i would tell a 22 year old version of me i know that there's older people who listen to this podcast as well all i want to say is that it's the age of virat kohli and while it's important to have respect for the tendulkars and dravids of the world our world is becoming a darker place and bharat india especially needs many more virat kohlis god bless you guys keep healing i love you go download the meditation app it will help you grow it will help you sort out a lot of your own shit it's called level super mind i just hope you grow man i don't care how many people watch this video i'm sorry if you watch this with family and it was weird hearing me abuse i'm trying to let go of my own aggression at this stage but honestly podcasts like this are therapeutic because i get to puke out everything i've been thinking about lately <sighs> don't mess with me chut